I do not bring to you is how to name things, as Philip just told you. Uh, the reason the name Stratechery is strategy and tech together. Uh, the advantage is when I started, kind of like Gary talked about, I was working another job and I was doing this at night, quite literally, is that the word Stratechery did not exist on the internet. The handle Stratechery was available on Twitter. All these things are available to me. It turns out there's a good reason because no one can, knows how to say the name, but it's okay, I have it and it works now. I was also appreciative that Gary talked about you don't have to do video. You don't have to do all the hot new thing. You can still do blogging. I'm like, yes, that's fantastic because I blog. I write long articles with lots of text, some hand drawings of which you'll see a few. And it turns out that on the internet, when you can speak to not just the people that are close to you, but you can speak to the entire world, you can build an audience and you can build a real business. In my case, a subscription business. I write four times a week, one is free, three or four pay, and I get to have a fantastic life in Taiwan of all places. Today I'm gonna talk to you about what Gary talked about, but the structure of it. What are the shifts, the changes in society that has happened because of the internet? What are the changes in business models? And how does that make the sorts of things he's talking about possible? And it's because the people decide. I thought the name, the online marketing rock star, was, was very interesting. Um, I'm not going to say I'm an online marketing rock star. Instead, I'm going to give you an example of probably the biggest online marketing rock star in the history of online marketing rock stars. Now, just to warn you, this is not a talk about politics. I will let you decide about the, whether this online marketing rock star is a good or a bad thing for society. But without question, the number one online marketing rock star is this guy. You may have heard, this is, amazingly enough, the President of the United States. And when he started, when he entered, when he entered the Republican nomination, Everyone said, no chance. Yes, he's leading the polls, no chance. And not just the pundits, the best people, the Nate Silvers of the world said, there is no way this guy will win. It is impossible. This is the only big block of text I'll give you. Regular 538 readers will be familiar with the party decides paradigm of the nomination process. It posits that the nominee represents the consensus choice, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. The party decides, though, was the core of why Nate Silver said that Donald Trump would not win. This is a very famous book in political circles about the U.S. political system. It used to be for as long as the U.S. was around, the parties selected their nominee for president in the so-called smoke-filled rooms. The party elders decided, okay, it's going to be this guy, and it was always a guy. He's going to be our nominee, and then the people voted between two candidates. That's how it worked. In the 1960s and 1970s, there was a big push to make it more democratic, to let the people decide who's going to be the nominee. And what this book said is actually nothing changed. Nothing was different. Because the reality is, the party is not politicians. The party is people who give money. The party is the interest groups, the labor unions, the teachers. The party is the people who actually decide who the voters will decide. The voters think they are choosing, but actually they're not really deciding anything. And the way to understand why this worked is actually to look at media. This is what media has always been structured as. You have integrated content on one side, a media company, a very small channel for distribution, and then you reach consumers. So in the case of newspapers, they put together editorial and ads, all in a bunch of paper that they wrap together and put on your doorstep. And what gave newspapers their power was this distribution. That's the only way to reach consumers. And that's how we got two kinds of marketing. The first kind of marketing was called earned media. This is where the newspaper decided to write about you or the TV channel decided to talk about you. TV is the exact same sort of structure. Oops, I hit the wrong button, sorry about that. And the other one was paid media, where you actually paid money so that you could be on TV, be in the newspaper. And in both cases, this put very strict limits. If you wanted earned media, you had to be broadly acceptable. You had to be okay to talk about you. You couldn't be very scandalous or talk about things that people didn't like. If you wanted paid media, you need money. You needed donors to give you checks. 
You needed a whole staff to make TV commercials, to do advertisements, all these sorts of things. That was the only way to make people even know who you were. Yes, the nomination process was open, but it actually wasn't open because you needed all this stuff. And you think about this, the way the structure of newspapers, you had editorial and advertising together, what was the hardest problem? The hardest problem was getting that to consumers. It was getting it on the doorstep. It was getting it in their hands. It was having a printing press. It was having delivery trucks. It was having paper boys. My first job, I was a paper boy. And that made it really hard to compete. And so you had these geographic monopolies. I have US examples, New York, LA, Chicago. Same thing, it could be a country monopoly. It could be cities, whatever it might be. But there was limited reach. It was governed by distribution. I just told you my business. My business is I sit in Taiwan and I write something and anyone anywhere in the world can read it. Because what happened? Am I paying so people in Germany can read my site? Am I paying so people in the United States can read my site? Am I paying so someone in, I have to say South Korea, because the one country I have no readers is North Korea, can read my site? No, of course not. The internet makes distribution totally free. And not just for me, but for everyone. Now your geography doesn't matter. You can read the New York Times. You can read the LA Times. You can read the German newspaper, a French newspaper, an Italian newspaper. Or you can read blogs. Or you can watch YouTube videos. Or you can look at Instagram. The number of things you've read has exploded. And not only that, no one goes to the front page anymore. No one goes to the front page of a newspaper. They don't get that bundle. They go to individual articles and there's an explosion. There's so many things to read, so many things to watch, so many things to view, no one can view them all. Distribution is easy. The real hard problem is finding stuff. How do you find out what to read? And this is where Google came along and why they are so dominant. The new hardest problem was discovery, was finding things to read and Google solved that problem. So people didn't go to sites, they went to Google and Google delivered individual pages to them. And then they pop some ads in front. And if you're an advertiser and you want to reach users, why would you go back to the bundle? Why would you go back to the end state? Why do you want to mess around with these guys? They're not worth anything. You want to get right in front of the user, you go to Google. And you see this pattern. Google was really the first one, but you see this pattern again and again, where you have this old world limited by geography. The hardest problem was distribution. And you go to a new world where there's abundance. The distribution isn't limited anymore. It's discovery. It's finding the new thing. So, for example, if you want to stay somewhere, you might want to stay in a hotel. If you're traveling, you're going to close your eyes, go to sleep. You have to have faith. You have to trust. You're not going to get attacked during the night. You're going to be safe. Well, how do you build trust? You build a brand. You go to a hotel that has that, 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 in a, in a specialized building just for staying in. What did Airbnb do? Airbnb, with their ratings, with their reviews, with building this sort of marketplace, they commoditized trust. They made trust into a digital good. And once you did that, does safety still matter? Of course it matters. But is that the only thing that matters? No, because you can feel safe in lots more places. Now maybe you want a washer and dryer. Maybe you want a good location. Maybe you want a kitchen. There's all kinds of reasons you might choose one place or the other. Might you choose a hotel? Of course, I, I like hotels. But you can also choose other things. It's a much more even playing field. Same thing with cars. You used to have medallions and only a few cars you can wave down with your hand. What's Uber's secret power? Well, I know how, you, how lots of uh, people in Germany feel. It's not just the no regulation. It's the fact that every single person in this room knows who Uber is. Every single person in this room knows, if I need a car, where do I go? I go to the Uber app, and it's there. And their customer acquisition costs are tiny. You don't need to put in a phone number. You don't need to wave your hand. It's already there. And now, instead of companies and medallions, it's broken down into individual cars. Netflix is one of the best examples. It used to be TV networks. Why? TV was governed by time. You could only watch one show at a time. Netflix, Net, Netflix started with a Stars deal. Stars licensed 11,000 movies to Netflix. How many movies could you watch on Stars? One, whichever one was on the Stars channel. 
How many movies could you watch on Netflix? 11,000 because it was all on demand. That old limitation, that distribution limitation was gone. Now it's about discovery. It's about finding new things and things that you can view. There was one more evolution though. With Google, you went to get something. You went to find something. Facebook flipped this around. Facebook takes all that stuff out there, takes it out there and feeds it to you. You just scroll through that feed. No effort required. It's all right in front of you. And what this did to politics is in the old day, the media structure was intertwined with the political structure. The reason you needed donors, the reason you needed people to help you is because they helped you get that earned media. They helped you get that paid media so you could solve the distribution problem. If there is no more distribution problem, there is no more power for the parties. The party, the Donald, just two more things on Facebook. So you went from a world of limited information, money for media, get out the vote, to a world of infinite information, free distribution, zero transaction costs. You can reach anyone, anywhere, for nothing. That's part one. That's why they could not stop Donald Trump. That's why the Democratic Party had such a hard time stopping Bernie Sanders. But then what happens next? Let's go back to this view. You had this view, you had this bundle of content that was filtered by the distribution channel. What could you get through that channel? Remember, the hardest thing was having the delivery trucks. If you're a CPG company, if you're a Unilever, the hard thing is getting your stuff onto the shelves. That's your power is you control shelf space. What happens when, though, and so, if, sorry, if you, if you only control the shelf space, what do you put there? You put things that everybody likes. Pretty bland, pretty boring, but nobody gets offended. Everybody will buy it. It's good enough. In this new world, though, it's flipped. In this new world, you have all this stuff, all these publications, all this content, all these videos, all churning around, and it all wants to fit through this new filter of attention, the word Gary used. Attention is the new limiter. Where will you find attention? And Facebook decides, and the new strategy is not bland and boring. It's a laser strategy. And what's so interesting, what laser actually means is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Stimulated emission of radiation. If you look up the definition of a laser, it will talk about it excites electrons. It literally uses the word excite. And you get all these electrons who get very excited, you get all the ones who are on the same wavelength, all moving in the same way. And you get this energy and you build it up and you build it up and you shoot it. That's what Facebook does. You have all this stuff churning around, all this content, all these pieces. And you get likes and you get shares and you start getting energy. You start getting excitement. You start getting people on the same wavelength. And it shoots out. And it's unbelievably powerful. It's far more powerful than what came before. Earned media is one thing. Paid media is another thing. Inspired media is completely different. And it's far more powerful. And to this point, you can't tack on a digital media strategy. You can't say, we have our, we're gonna make some commercials, we're gonna do some advertisements, and oh, oh, let's do some Facebook ads. And let's do some Twitter ads. Probably a bad idea. Let's do some Snapchat ads. That will never work, because to take advantage of inspired media, you have to build your products. Everything about your company has to be focused on a completely new kind of business. In the old world, earned media was being acceptable. You didn't say anything offensive. Your product was bland. Paid media just had to be good enough. I can advertise laundry detergent. I can advertise a car. It just has to be good enough for enough people. Inspiring media, your product has to be unique. It has to be special. Good enough products do not win on the internet. Your target mass market, TV, I need to reach as many people as possible. Newspapers, I want to reach a whole area. No. 
your target with a unique thing is niche. It's a very small audience, but it's a small audience in a small area, but we're not dealing with a small area. We're dealing with the internet. The internet is massive. It's so massive, you can write a very targeted site about technology and strategy and have a whole lot of subscribers because it's the whole world. You're marketing, oh, people want to write, journalists want to write trend pieces. What's interesting? What's the hot new thing? Paid media, mass market. Just appeal to lots of people, get big movie stars to advertise your product, get an athlete to appear in a commercial as if he cares, as if she knows what the product even does. If you're inspired, you have to be targeted. You have to know who is your audience. What do they care about? Because they are paying attention. They're not going to buy something because a celebrity tells them to. They're not going to try something because they saw a commercial. How do you do it? Paid media is access. You had to be a normal politician if the editorial boards were going to pay attention to you. If journalists were going to cover you, you had to be a normal sort of boring politician. Paid media, it's distribution. It's do you own how you get things to shelves, how you get things out there. If it's inspired media, it's passion. The reason the media covered Donald Trump is not because the media wanted to cover Donald Trump. It's because their audience demanded that they cover Donald Trump. It's because they covered Donald Trump, their ratings went through the roof. Because they have no power. The media has no power. The media is competing with me, one person. The media is competing with Gary, one person. The media is competing with all of you. We are all on one planet, on one internet, and you break through not because you own control of distribution. You break through because people give a damn. They tell their friend. They tell their coworkers. They get on a safe wavelength. They get excited. They get pumped up. They tell more people. It builds, it builds, it builds, and it builds to the point where you can cut through absolutely anything. Thank you very much. Ben.